Hey, I'm Lana. And I'm Casey, and we are Class C Broads. We recently visited Grand Teton National Park and decided to stay on the west side of the mountains in Victor, Idaho. In this video, we'll show you the Victor, Idaho area, our campground, and all the fun things that we did in the area. Show me your Teton. And if you like this video, show us some love by hitting the subscribe button. It's somewhere around in here. Cause we're classy bras. We're girls who are me. We're dames who don't just live at the dream. Let's go look up the door and hit the So if you're headed to Grand Teton National Park, you obviously have to figure out where you're going to stay. There are lots of options in the area. You've got Jackson Hole, you've got Wilson, you've got Teton Village, and of course you've got the National Park itself. The reason why I didn't want to stay at any of those places was that it would require us to go down this very, very scary highway in the RV with lots of switchbacks and up to 10% grade. And there are these containment catchment systems on the side of the highway specifically designed to catch runaway trucks, RVs, the whole thing. Just the idea of having that made me crazy. Okay, okay. So she's getting a little dramatic here, folks. Teton Pass is not that bad. Put your hands down. It's okay. <laughs> Look at her. She's all, ah! Teton Pass is just fine. We drove it every day when we went In from, the Jeep. In the Jeep when we went from Victor to Grand Teton National Park, which, by the way, takes about an hour. It's a beautiful hour spent. It's well worth it. I wouldn't know because I had my eyes shut the whole time. Yeah, so how does she even know if it was bad or not? So you can totally take your RV over Teton Pass if you're comfortable with it. Obviously, somebody in our party was not comfortable with that situation. So we stayed in Victor. And we wanted to see Victor anyway because we knew it had some cool breweries. And just, you know, the vibe of the town looked really neat. Resort just off of Highway 31 in Victor, Idaho. This place had a little bit for everyone. If you have an RV, there's a spot for you. If you want to stay in a teepee, you can do that. They have about 70 different uh, cabins, about 30 different RV spots, and I think around five teepees. And the teepees are super cute. As you go into the park, that's the first thing that you'll notice are the teepees. If you book early enough, then you can get a rate of $75. The people next to us did not book early enough and were paying twice that a night. Yeah, I think we, I looked online right before we shot this, and I think the rates are closer to 100 now if you're booking in advance. But again, we lucked out and I think got them for 75 a night. Yeah, we booked around, I think, nine months in advance. It wasn't like a KOA where it was all kid-based, but they did have a lot of amenities, including a spa. Yeah, we aren't really spa type of people. But it smelled nice. The campground also had a very nice swimming area and a hot tub area. 
but you know we didn't have our swimsuits with us and really didn't have time to to do any of that we were there to really go to Grand Teton National Park yeah Lana got in a, some fake pickleball while we were there the, they have a, a little bistro restaurant where you could go get uh, some of the local craft beer and some sandwiches and it looks right out over the swimming pool so if you had kids and you wanted to watch them but you wanted to enjoy your adult beverages a perfect place for that and they also had you know things that you would normally find at a campground you know like a very nice shower restroom area yeah the the showers were it wasn't a shower house so you had your own individual bathroom there were about, I think, five of them laid out and you can walk in there and it was all tiled. And it was basically like a bathroom that you would have in your own house. It was very clean and very nice. I think one of the neatest parts of the campgrounds were the little cabins there. Very cute, very modern inside, you know, fireplace, stainless steel appliances. Separate bedroom. Yeah, they had, um, some of them had, I think more than one bedroom or a loft, um, a separate bedroom and bathroom area, and then kind of an open kitchen living area, and all in a really small space. They, they actually did a really good job with the layout of these cabins. The prices at the time that we stayed there, I think were around $150 or so on up, depending on what layout you chose. The campground is also expanding. While we were there, there was a very large area that was currently under construction and they were building several cabins while we were staying there. I think they're also expanding the RV uh, sites as well, not just the cabins. The only thing that the camp could probably improve upon is to maybe have a dedicated dog park, dog area. You know, we walk the dogs around the campground, which is perfectly fine with us, but you know, a dog park area would have been nice. And the RV spots, some are paved and some are gravel, and the, the paved ones, which is where we were, could accommodate very large rigs. You don't have a, a lot of space between you and your neighbor, but you have a lot of room for larger rigs. Of course, our first outing in Victor had to be a brewery. So we went to Grand Teton Brewing Company and it was well worth it. It was tiny, 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 and there were a lot of people there. The beer was really good. What you got there? Yeah, we ended up spending, I think, around $120 when we were there. Not just on beer. Yeah, we did get some merch, right? So, show off my Tetons here. <laughs> and the beer wasn't crazy expensive. It was just we were happy to be somewhere in the mountains and just a little bit giddy from alcohol. The brewery predates the craft beer craze. It was started by the Otto Brothers back in the late 1980s. The brewery was actually located in Wilson and then moved to the current location in Victor about a decade later. But the brothers are credited with changing the Wyoming liquor laws as well as bringing the idea of the growler to the United States. Wow. Yeah. At least that's what it says on their website. You read it on the internet, it's true. <laughs> Of course, one brewery in a day is just not enough for us, so we headed to another brewery down the road on the main drag in Victor called Wildlife Brewing. Yeah, the place was supposed to have food, specifically pizza, and we were super disappointed that the 
kitchen area was closed, at least at the time of our visit. But we had a couple of nice beers and uh, had met some friends from the campground there and watched them drink a flight. So all in all, a, a good time. No pizza for you. Victor has enough to keep you entertained while you're not at the national park. Or at a brewery. <laughs> True, but the brewery is part of the entertainment. Uh, there's an ice cream shop and some souvenir shops. There's a little market there, bagel store, some other restaurants. There's this cool indoor outdoor venue called Westside that has a great local beer. They also had some excursion companies that would take you fishing or on ATV trips. So there was definitely enough, you know, if you didn't want to go to the park every day, you could kind of hang out downtown and explore a little bit. Yeah, it definitely has a touristy feel, but isn't as overwhelmingly touristy as like what I felt when we stopped in Jackson Hole for a little bit. It's got a nice, cute, little town feel to it. And there's another small town about 10 miles away called Driggs that kind of has that same feel as well. And it might be a little bit larger. You know, they, they also had a brewery that we went to that had amazing food. And it was called Citizen 33. <music> good beers, but as Casey mentioned, the food there was phenomenal. I'd say that that was one of the best places that we ate on the whole trip. Right. If you're planning a trip to the Grand Tetons, Victor might be a spot for you. You should check it out if, you know, you don't want to stay in the park or in Jackson. Victor is a great alternative to that with a cute, charming, small town feel. In our next video, we'll actually get to the Tetons and share some of our experiences there. But in the meantime, whether you're on the road or on the web, stay classy. I'm videoing you. Well, howdy. We're here at the Teton Valley Resort. What you got there? Wait, I feel like I always sound like a hick in these videos. I have a sour beer. While we were there, let's see. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just trying to get you to lighten up a little. <laughs> Let me look at your face. You got eye bugs. Great. Yeah. Okay, one, try that cut one more time. Lighten up! Why are you humming, Casey? Covering up the music. It's my music. Sing, sing louder, please. I have a beer. It's a sour. It's a pretty, pretty sour. Why are you going closer to the speaker? Please go farther away. Where are we at? Tito. Oh.